Good evening. It's great to have all of you with us as we gather this evening to worship, to praise God, and to receive the gifts of life through word and sacrament. Great to have all of you with us this evening. There are a couple things we need to share before we begin worship. Uh, first of all, please remember that this coming Wednesday is the corn roast, our annual corn roast over at the Lion's Shelter. Uh, information about that is in the bulletin. Uh, the corn roast is a marvelous ministry. It's been going on for many years. I don't know how many, at least 20, probably more than that. Uh, and it's a free gift and a free meal that brings our community together. Uh, this is in some ways not a church event. It's a community event in some ways, but it is uh, part of our ministry. And so we invite you to be a part of that. You can be a part of the corn roast simply by attending. Please join us on Wednesday. Or, second, bring your friends, bring your neighbors, bring your family to, 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 uh, to share with us. And then finally, if you're able to help with the corn roast, there are some signups on the table out in the uh, gathering area. We're still looking for help in a few areas. You can be a part of this ministry that reaches out, that shares the gift of food, but also the gift of community with the people around us. So we welcome you to be a part of that. Uh, we do have one prayer concern we want to lift up. We want to keep Marilyn Genevico in our prayers. Uh, Marilyn will be having pretty extensive surgery on Monday uh, with some, some long, kind of a long uh, recovery time. So uh, please keep Marilyn in your prayers, uh, especially on Monday as she uh, goes through that procedure. And then pray for her healing, the gift of healing from a good and gracious God. As you are comfortable, would you please rise and would you join me in confession and forgiveness? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. When met by those in need, we have too often passed by on the other side. Set us again on the path of life, save us from ourselves, and free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You are free to love as God loves. Amen. We continue with the singing of God who stretched the spangled heaven. Oh, 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be the life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace, that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from the 15th chapter of the book of Genesis. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, this man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. We've got some kids here this evening. You guys want to come up for a children's message? Come on up. Come on up. So how are you doing? Good. You're doing good? Good. So have you ever gone in the backyard of your house at night, right? And you lay back in the grass and you look up. And you look at all the stars. Do you ever do that? Sometimes. Sometimes. Do you ever count them? Sometimes. How many do you have? Twenty. Twenty stars? Is that all there are? Or is, or is that when you stop counting? That's when you stop counting. Do you guys ever count stars? Uh, no, I'm sorry. What's that? No, I stargazed. You stargazed? Are there a lot of stars out there? When you start stargazing on a dark mm -hmm. night, you know, when there are no clouds, and there aren't, maybe if you can go to a place where there aren't a lot of street lights. We were on our, our vacation trip for a couple weeks and we went out to a place called the Badlands in South Dakota and we had a presentation in, at the, in, in the dark by, one of, by a couple of the park rangers and especially out in like that part of the country where there aren't a lot of lights, you can just see so many stars. It's just, forget, it's not even worth counting. You just can't count. Well, the reason I asked is because if you listen carefully to the reading that I just shared, it's a story about a guy named Abram. Later on, he changes his name a little bit, and we know him as Abraham. And Abraham is kind of bummed because he has no children. And in that culture, in that world, you really needed kids because that's how you kept your line going. And he didn't have any. And he's kind of bummed about that. And then God came to him and he said, Abraham, listen. Uh, uh, really, Abraham, trust me. Trust me on this one. Do you know how many off, how many descendants you're going to have? Children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, great great grandchildren, great 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 grandchildren, great 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 grandchildren, and on and on and on. He said, as many as the stars. And Abraham said, really? And God said, trust me on this. I was thinking about that. Um, I don't know. I mean, I have one daughter and. And, and maybe she'll have children, maybe she won't. We live in a different world. It isn't quite the same. But God makes a promise to me. And God makes a promise to you too. And God's promise is kind of like he made to Abraham. It's not about children. It's about blessings. Because sometimes I feel like God's forgotten about me. You know, like God, you know, hello, hello, I'm here. You want, you know, you want to help me out a little bit? You ever feel that way? Yeah, I do too. But you know what? blesses us. God gives us blessings. God holds us. God loves us. And you know how many times God does that? As many as the stars in the sky. 
That's how many times God does that. Again and again and again and again and again and again. And then again. God is there and God loves us and God blesses us over and over and over again. As many as the stars in the sky. So when you finally figure out how many stars are in the sky and you can stop counting, then you know how many blessings. But until then, God's going to keep blessing you. Again and again and again. Okay? So remember that. Especially when you get in the middle of the week, you know, and things are kind of like, ugh. And you're feeling like, God, where are you? Remember, God will keep blessing you again and again and again and again. Okay? Well, very good. Thank you very much. You guys can go back to your seats. And as they return to their seats, I'll invite the congregation to stand as you are comfortable for the reading of the gospel. The Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, Blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. So I mentioned in the children's message that we had been to the Badlands in um, South Dakota on our recent trip. Uh, we also traveled then through Colorado. That was kind of the, the point of the trip, uh, to go to Colorado and do some things there. And one of the things we did is we visited the town of Aspen, you know, famous for skiing. We visited Aspen, famous for skiing and Rolex watches and Gucci bags. I mean, it's, it's all upscale stuff, you know. And um, so we were there just for a couple hours to kind of, you know, poke around a little. And then we left Aspen. Now, I don't know, anybody, have you ever been to Aspen and traveled east on Colorado 82, Highway 82? It's a treat, let me tell you. Highway 82 is closed during the winter. That gives you your first clue. It takes you up kind of a bit of a road, which I'll get back to in a moment, and you end up at Independence Pass, which is a little over 11,000 feet in elevation. And there's a nice little area to stop there, parking area, and a, little uh, uh, pathway that leads you over kind of an overlook and, and um, oddly enough at that height there's still a couple ponds up there it's kind of interesting to see the ponds but then we just it was time to leave and we were heading east towards um, Leadville which is an old mining town in Colorado and as you be as you begin to leave this little area by Independence Pass there is a sign a warning sign and it says caution sharp curves and steep drops over the next five miles. Now I need to tell you, the going down that side with that warning was a lot easier than coming up the other way. Five miles of steep curves and sharp drops was nothing compared to what we had getting up there on the west side of Independence Pass. So we left Aspen, we're going up this road, Colorado 82, and um, uh, my, my, my wife, is, no, my, my microphone is still not working right, sorry. My wife is not a big fan of twisty, curvy, hilly mountain roads at all. And so we're going up the road, we're heading up, <coughs> and there are these nice little drop-offs on the right-hand side. And, you know, people are coming around, sometimes there are guardrails there, sometimes there aren't. And then we get to a spot where there's a sign that says, caution, one lane road ahead. And we get to that point and there's a stoplight. And 
And so we stopped. And then the waited and we waited and then the light turned green and we went and then we understood what a one lane road is. A one lane road is this. It is literally one lane wide. There is a cliff about 100 feet straight up and down on the left and there is a cliff going down 100 feet or more on the right and there's no guardrail. Literally a one lane road going around the side of the mountain. A few minutes later, we ran into a second one-lane road with a stop. All the while as we're going up, my dear wife is just shuddering, looking away from the side of the mountain, and I'm keeping my eyes on the road, hoping that when we do the one-lane roads, the people on the other side are in fact observing stoplights, because there is no place to swerve. In fact, there was even really no place to even turn around and go back. And so as we went up this probably 15 miles of this kind of stuff, you began to wonder, will it ever end? I kind of wonder if Abraham went through some of that. You see, Abraham was the, one, the father of the chosen people. And the story begins with the reading that I shared with you a few moments ago. Abraham, childless, getting to be up in years, probably about, oh, he must be about 70 at this point, maybe, roughly 70 or so. And he has no children. And that's a big deal in that culture. I mean, it's a huge deal in that culture. If you die childless in that culture, you're done. You're, you're, you're over. It's over for you. But if you have a child, you continue. Your line continues and you continue. So Abraham has no children. But God comes and says, good news, Abraham. Honestly, believe me, you will have descendants like the stars above. And Abraham believes it. And the text says it is reckoned to him as righteousness. Way to go, Abraham. Good guy. But the journey is not over yet. He still has lots of twists and turns to endure. And so he goes on with his life, with his wife Sarah. And finally, after a number of fits and starts and turns and twists and maybe a few you know, kind of, you know, long drop-offs, God delivers. And Abraham and Sarah have a child named Isaac. And all is good. All is wonderful, except they haven't gotten to the top of the mountain yet. There is still more to go. And so then in, later on, Genesis 22, a wonderful story. God comes to Abraham and says, you need to take Isaac. Your only son, Isaac, who is the, the, the fulfillment of the promise that God has made to him, you need to take him to a mountain, not quite as high as Independence Pass. You need to take him to a mountain that I will show you, and you are to sacrifice him to me. How will God keep his promise to give Abraham the descendants that number the stars if his only son is to be taken from? Abraham is faithful. And so in chapter 22, Abraham takes Isaac to that mountain. As they're climbing up the mountain, Isaac wonders, where is the sacrifice, Father? Not knowing he is the sacrifice. And, God, and Abraham says, and this is the key to the story, God will provide. Not just a sacrifice. God will provide. The promise that God has made to Abraham, which now is slipping away, which will be gone forever the moment Isaac's life ends. But nonetheless, even though it is impossible for Abraham to see any other outcome, he is confident that in some way that he cannot understand, God will provide. Now just to let you know, when they get to the top of the mountain, God sends an angel, and the angel says, don't do it, and God provides a ram 
that is caught in the thicket to be the sacrifice. So all ends well, except for the ram, maybe. But the point is, of that story in, in Genesis chapter 22, is God will provide even when we cannot see the possibility of anything good happening. God will nonetheless provide. And that story begins with the reading I shared with you a few minutes ago. That promise that God made to Abraham that you will have descendants that number the stars. Well, just as we were on a journey up a hillside, and uh, Abraham was up on a journey through life, we're on that same journey. Maybe not with the hills and the mountains and the twists and the curves, but we are in the midst of a journey where we have sometimes nothing else but to proclaim with confidence that in some fashion, God will I mean, think about where our world is, and you don't even need COVID in the picture. Just think about life in general. Think about all those twists and curves and, and challenges and difficulties that occur in the midst of a journey of life that doesn't go where we want it to go, that doesn't go where we expect it to go, that goes left and right and up and down, but never where we think it ought to go. And yet, we have the confidence then in the midst of that journey, God will provide. Because God has promised the gifts of life. Not always the gifts of life that we expect, that we want, that we envision, that we hope for, that we yearn for, but the gifts of life that matter most. The gifts of life that cannot be lost. The promise cross. The promise of the crucified Jesus, the crucified Jesus, who in his death and resurrection assures us that no matter how bleak it is, no matter how difficult it is to, to see any signs of hope, God will provide. And so in the midst of a world that continues to be wrapped with a pandemic, in the midst of a world in which the economy is who knows what it's doing in the midst of a world in which there are increasing geopolitical tensions in Asia, Europe, and all over the place, in the midst of a world in which we have our own political challenges right here in our own country, in the midst of a world in which neighbors and, and friends are separated and torn apart by all sorts of things that are going around, in the midst of a world where we even have monkeypox, God will provide. Because God has promised. And in the person of Jesus, God has delivered life. Life in its fullness and life that can never be lost. The gift of a God who loves us dearly. The gift of a God who yearns to hold us in his embrace, to renew and restore us, to give us life to give us life abundantly. The promise given to Abraham, the promise given to us, as we talk with the children in the, in the, <clears throat> in the children's message, you know, maybe it's not descendants. Imagine that many grandkids coming over for Thanksgiving. Oh, my goodness. Instead, think of it as the blessings. The abundance of blessings. And so the next time you're outside, you're able to get away from some lights in the evening and the sky is clear, look up in the stars, count them and see if you can figure out how many blessings God provides. Countless. Countless blessings. But most importantly, the countless blessings of the crucified. The crucified and risen. We continue with the singing of Blessed Assurance. As you are comfortable, would you please rise? Here of 
thanksgiving, we remember all who have died in faith and now rest in you. As they placed their hope in you, so strengthen us to trust in your promise of new life. Merciful God, receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed our right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Would you please join me in the prayer our Lord taught us to pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In Christ's presence, there is fullness of joy. Come to the banquet. You may be seated.
body of Christ given for you. The 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 body of Christ given body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. May God continue to fill you with blessings so much, so numerous that you cannot count them. And may you always know who God's care. you're comfortable, would you please rise and would you pray with me? Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. We continue with singing Lord of all hope. Oh, 
Go in peace. Love your neighbors.